Okay, so I wanted to show everyone my project that I was working on. I got tired of my tiny little ball mill and only able to ball mill two ounces of aluminum powder or uh, black powder or whatever I happened to be doing at the time. So this is a yeah, 14 inch piece of 4 inch PVC which is the removable rubber end caps that you can buy at the hardware store. This has been uh, glued in place, the end cap. And all I have is this are just parts from an old treadmill. And it's, it's old enough, and I'll give you a better look at the circuit board here a little bit later, but it's old enough to where I can attach alligator clips to a 5K linear potentiometer. I say linear, meaning it can't be uh, logarithmic or uh, audio. It has to have a B on it, B5K, 5K variable resistor. And I've just attached these three leads to the H, W, and L on the silicon controlled rectifier. And that's the uh, high, low, and the wiper. The wiper is the, is the actual variable output lead, but it requires all three to take a reading from the low end to the high end, two different readings to uh, tell the silicon controlled rectifier what kind of speed to send to the motor. DC motor uh, operating at 120, let me see, no, this, this is a 90 volt DC motor. So it's the house currents being rectified. I have this plug into the wall, rectified to 90 volts DC. Variable. This is a brush motor, so that's how that's capable. The inductor is right here, and the exact uh, reason you need the inductor, I think, is to supply um, more consistent voltage under load. I'm not going to really have that kind of load here, but and this is way overkill for a ball mill, but what I wanted to do, I mean, you're not going to overweight the motor, you're not going to overload the motor, this has come off of a treadmill. I could put, you know, 20 pounds of grinding media in this if I wanted to. And your, the barrel could be as big as I want it. So you, basically you, you can't uh, put too much on this, which is what I'm trying to say. Let's get going. I'll show you what I have here. This is actually the H, this is the W, and this is the L. And on this potentiometer, to make this motor uh, spin sooner rather than later when I turn the dial clockwise I just had to reverse these so let's get it going here okay and that little jumping little jumping you're seeing is right here I just haven't taken that off yet and the motor is kind of the uh, armor of the motor is actually rubbing the wood a little bit over there but this is, there's still uh, some tweaking left to be done. Uh, I just wanted to show you the variable speed. I'm going to go ahead and stop there and cut that knot off. It's bugging me. Okay, so like I said, there's still some fine tuning to be done. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to input a piece on this side to keep in case something happens. I'm going to probably elevate this in just slightly to keep all the media and everything to one end. But so it doesn't get into the actual, um, what do you want to call that? The, the pulley of the, of the drive, drive roller. I'll uh, have an offset so that with a roller with a bearing on it. You can see it's kind of wanting to go that way. And if I left it over here, it would eventually just kind of cut a little groove right there. So that's not good. See right here? It's already trying to work a little groove into it, but uh, just for concept purposes, the variable speed, we can turn it way down. And if you want to, you know, you have this, uh, when I get this permanent, I'll be able to really get after it if I want to be more aggressive. And that would be way faster than anything you would ever need to mill. That was just kind of an example. But another thing to point out too, I won't leave this uh, rolling on the rubber end cap. I think over time it would cause it to not have a good seal. And I can't put 
the screw clamp on it. This is the screw clamp that just makes it tight right here. So I can't do that. All the, the, the simple thing to do is just build this up with whatever means that you, I may just, uh, I may just layer duct tape on it just to build it up. One on each end. You can do that or you could probably, I could cut maybe some bigger PVC and put on it, but there will be gaps that might cause jumping. So I'm not really sure how I'm gonna offset it and just bring it up. The main thing is you don't want it rubbing on anything like, a, like I was the pulley there. But a few minor tweaks of this, and this will be ready to go. And it will probably do five pounds, maybe, maybe four pounds of aluminum at a time. I'm not real sure, but I'm looking forward to the end result. Here's a look at the, uh, the controller, the silicon controlled rectifier. This, this is just clipped down in here. <laughs> okay, so that's what you don't want to do. Uh, I should have turned it off from the wall, but yeah, don't remove one of the clips while it's still plugged in because then it senses a, uh, the top speed. I'm glad I didn't have my finger near that belt. That could have got real interesting. But anyway, let's, uh, let's go turn it off and I'll show you. All right, now there's no power to it. Down here, there's two pins side by side. One says W and one says L for low, the wiper. This is actually the variable output of the center pin of the potentiometer, which is right here, the yellow. So that reads that, and then the high is over here. It's the red, but on mine, I just I, I hook this red, yellow, and black, and on the potentiometer, it's black, yellow, red. So there's that. That's why I like doing these YouTube videos. I kind of learn as I, I try to teach at the same time. It's interesting, and real simply, all I did was just, there's three screws coming up from the bottom of this, and it just block holds that armature of the rotor in there. The center, this piece right here. There's the inductor, and I have the, this is not permanent yet, but I'm gonna fix that permanently, a 12 amp breaker. Here's the wire coming in here with a stress release or relief. I just use zip ties. I hope you can see in there. It's just so I can't pull it out and hurt anything. But wiring is simple on it. There's no, uh, you notice that this doesn't have the two blue wires coming out. All the blue wires are, are a thermal switch. You don't even need them to operate the motor. It's just a safety feature. This one doesn't have it. So it's just made it that much easier. All right, how to build a ball mill from a, a dismantled treadmill. Yeah, I bought it at a yard sale. Let me know what you think in the comments, guys. Uh, if you have uh, some ideas, something I need to know, I'm all ears. And uh, this was kind of a fun build for me. There was a big black widow in this treadmill when I took it apart and I laid my hand about a half inch from it before I realized it was there. Got my heart racing. Anyway, let me know, like I said, what you think about this design and you leave them in the comments. Thumbs up, subscribe, and I'll talk to y'all later.